Hey guys, Death Slater Magic here, and even more garbage cards were leaked from Aether Revolt, but, well, in keeping with its name, I find it a little bit too revolting to even talk about at this time. For those of you who, for some unknown reason, do not see the power of the set, like the fact that you can swing with a 10-11 on turn 3, oh, and mulligan then scry your way to that combo, and summon limitless number of artifacts for 1 to 0 cost reduced to 0, then gain life for all of them, recover them to your hand, cast them all again, redraw them as you cast them, once again draw your entire deck, cast your entire deck, gain 500 life, and then win the game 4 times over on the stack with Aetherflux Reservoir. So if for some reason you don't believe that, even though that's in front of your face, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. Wait until the pros start refusing to show up to the Grand Prix in the Pro Tours, then you'll know what I'm talking about. When the Eldrazi winter happened, when everybody got all pissy and all the pros said, screw it, I'm boycotting the GP, this is a joke, why would I even waste my time, and they just didn't show up, uh, it's gonna be that times 10. These decks are unplayable. I mean, you're going to have to be a really big fan of Legacy and Vintage and their flip a coin, oh, I went first, I win garbage to enjoy Standard. I think even the pre-release is going to be a joke because um, there's so many bomb cards. It's not just, oh, I pulled Gisela, go me. You know, I pulled Emrakul, woohoo. Actually, I don't think Emrakul would necessarily win you the pre-release, but um, it's like you either pull a bomb or you don't, and you probably got about a one in three chance of it, and then you'll probably get the combo off with all the passive scry and draw that are allowed. So your opponent's going to be in trouble if they didn't pull some just OP as all hell combo, like an auto crewer and a couple vehicles, you know, something like that. If they just pulled normal cards, they don't stand a chance in hell of winning. And since it's such high likelihood with so many bombs, it's going to be a disaster. I mean, I always said I like the pre-release because it's a level playing field, but now it's not. It, it's just luck. 100% pack opening luck. That is it. No skill whatsoever. So they managed to not only ruin standard, ruin modern with some of these cards, but they've also ruined technically commander to an extent because it has printed a blue commander that is just stupidly outrageous. I'm sure they've broken frontier. Not that I care. Good for them. The more damage they can do to it, the better. They're basically just pushing people into another game at this point, and that's what's happening anyway, and that's why they printed this set. Oh look, a self-sustaining cycle. This should be fun. The reason they're losing people and the reason they're pissing people off is because they had $1,000 overpowered unbeatable decks. What's the number one? That was Kanza Tarkir. What's the number one complaint right now, according to their own research with their own poll? People hate the fact that there's three overpowered decks and you can't stop them. There's nothing you can do to stop a turn four Emrakul. You can't do anything about it. Green Black Delirium is unbeatable. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Plus, there's three different control decks that just shut down your opponent from even playing Magic. They're so good they could probably sweep a modern tournament. What they do, they made control even worse in the next set. I mean, what the hell? Oh, and if you still don't believe me, or if you're just saying, okay, I'll go do something more constructive with my time and money for the meantime. Well, first of all, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt aren't going anywhere, and let's be honest, at this point you don't even need any cards from outside those two sets. I mean, maybe one or two little, like, spot removal or some dumb thing, but you certainly aren't going to dust off your allies deck. And, um, oh, your, your Black Red Madness uh, Vampires that just won F&M four times in a row? Yeah, you don't stand a chance in hell with that. Oh, remember how everybody said, oh, it's so great now that we get to keep and use our decks for two years. What a load of crap. It just pisses me off that only, I'd say from the comments, about one third of you understand what they just did and what just happened. Their sales are falling, so what do they do? Make a set that you literally have to buy. All of the good cards are in it, period. So what does that do? That sets up Amon Ket to be in a rather poor situation. It's either going to be just garbage that can't compete with the ridiculous, like, turn four Emrakul crap, or they're going to make it even worse. They're going to make it even more powerful. Huh? Just make a 5-5 five, five indestructible for two. Why the hell not? I mean, at this point, why not? And then there's people saying, oh, but you can counter it. You could force somebody to sacrifice it. I'm sure you could. If you literally looked at your opponent's deck, took like two hours, went on the gatherer, looked up the exact deck to beat it, 
built that and it's nothing but like counter spells and sacrificing and just the most jankiest single purpose deck yeah you might be able to beat it should you have to do that no that's not how magic works so just think about that if anything you have to admit that what i just said is 100 percent correct amon cat either has to crush kaladesh and aether revolt um in order for anybody to buy it otherwise it's just going to be a dead set that nobody touches or it's going to be so stupidly powerful that everybody just wins on turn three instead of turn four. Either that or you're going to need like straight jacket level control decks. Like flip the power switch off on your opponent's deck type of control. Because that's the only thing that's going to stop dump out eight servos and win the game. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and just post every single combination. It's not my fault if you guys can't see it. You can get infinite counters on turn four or five. You can have a 3-4 on turn 2. This is proven. You could swing for 10 on turn 3, swing for 10 on turn 4 and win the game. You could have 8 servos on the field by turn 5 and win the game. You could have 8 clues on the field and win the game. That's turn 4 as well. I ran the numbers. You can do it. It can be done. Everybody telling me, oh, there are counters for it? First of all, who gives a crap? I don't want to play modern. I don't want to sit there and build my deck around, oh, I better defend against a turn four win. Because what is that? That's 24 spells of removal and counter spells. That, that's just stupid. That's pointless. That's idiotic. That's the level you'd have to have to stop some of these combos because they can reload and they have secondary win conditions because they're all, you know, two card, three card combos. Guess what? You can have 10 unique cards in your deck times four. If it's a combo deck, you wouldn't reduce it to three, I'm saying, so it would be 10. So just so some of you stop embarrassing yourselves in the comment sections and on Reddit and pretty much everywhere else, it seems like everybody I know who's an exceptional player, like people who have been, you know, level two judges, they've worked at tournaments, they've been to tournaments, they've played competitively. When they see the spoilers, they go, oh my God. And half of them so far have told me I'm, I'm not playing magic. This is, this is a joke. This isn't magic. This is an insult. This is literally just a scam to sell cards. This is like, here, this will make you more powerful than your friends when you build the new deck. Oops, everybody showed up at the same damn deck and everybody wins on turn four. Oops. These cards are out there. The combos are out there. They're realistic and no amount of control is going to stop them. Not that early in the game. You would have to outpull them at miracle levels to stop what they're doing. If you think like eight cards in your deck of artifact removal are going to stop this, you're an idiot. They'll just keep scrying and drawing endlessly until they draw their way back to the combo. If they're drawing more cards than you, they're generating more mana than you, all their creatures can tap for mana, all their spells don't cost anything, you can't control that. That's not something you can just out-counterspell. It can't be done. Well, except maybe with the new blue commander, but other than that, I mean, he's not going to start in your hand consistently every game. I believe you have a... 47% chance or something like that of pulling him naturally without mulliganing once. Even mulliganing four times, which at that point you've lost the game, I don't think it crosses above 75%. So you cannot consistently say, I'm going to count on this one card to save the day. On the flip side, your opponent has, well, I have four horribly unfair infinite combo win conditions or just, you know, giant creature win conditions where I swing for 20 plus. You'd have to stop all of them, but then they have to do almost no work and have almost no luck to just get one of them to go off. A lot of the techniques just say, oh, start dropping counters on something or start dropping artifacts onto the field. Once they start, it doesn't matter what the end result is. They're going to win one way or another with one of the cards. So if there's 16 different cards they could win with, they're probably going to reasonably hit one before you can like wipe the board six times or whatever idiotic plan people are proposing. So these decks can't be stopped. I mean, just think about it. That's the complaint right now about standard is that the decks cannot reasonably be stopped. Yes, a 20 creature, 20 counter spell, 20 land deck would probably stop a turn four Ember Cool somehow, but is that even a good deck? Will that deck even win? You know, can it go to turn 15 and still win? Probably not. They'll probably beat you to death with like a 3 2 creature at some point. That's why people don't just all build control decks, they don't work. Eventually they burn out. So there's no way to stop these cards. I mean, and even if there was, would you want to play that? I mean, it's just modern is what it is. I hate playing modern. Modern's a freaking joke of a format. Modern would be great if there was a hundred different decks that people play, and I'm sure there are, but not competitively, because the same five or six stupid decks dominate everything. That is the number one complaint from amateurs all the way up to the top level pros. They all say the same thing. 
it's the same five stupid decks. And once in a while, some little tier 1.5 garbage creeps in and top eights. So what? Doesn't mean it's a better deck. Newsflash, whatever wins the tournament does not automatically qualify the top eight as net decks. Uh, they're, they're the best decks in the world. There is luck involved. Plus the skill of the player. I mean, hello. So the thing that everybody's complaining about, overpowered decks and the same stupid decks over and over and over. Is that what you want standard to turn into? Because that's what you've got. That's what Aether Revolt is. Plus, you have to rebuy and rebuild your whole deck as soon as it comes out. Forget every year and a half. Forget every two years. You have to rebuild your deck now every three months because they're just going to power creep every single set. I mean, if you had a Kaladesh deck, you'd probably have to rebuild the damn thing with all Aether Revolt cards. And I've heard people suggest that there is one little silver lining. Allegedly, since just about every single rare and mythic is just insane, like either a improved or an identical clone to a famous modern staple, or something that's just vastly more powerful, like the one cost kill spell, it's just loaded with stuff like that. So the EV of a box should be like 200, 250 bucks, right? Because everybody wants every card, simple as that. They're going into all different decks. That's not how net decking works, and I think we all know that net deckers set the prices. Like, seriously, that is it. That is simply the only factor that sets card prices is what are the top net decks. Nothing else factors in. Well, except for card demand in modern, and that goes back to what are the top net decks. So, pretty much the same deal. Well, let's see. How did Wizards handle everything they've printed in 2016? Oh, that's right. They overprinted the hell out of it if they could. Hell, even if they couldn't, they still did it. Oh, this is a limited print run. And now we're printing some more. By limited print run, they meant that they're limited on they might run out of paper and ink. Because there sure as hell isn't anything else stopping them from printing box after box after box of Eternal Masters. Oh, and if they had the boxes the whole time and this isn't even a second print run, uh, and they lied about it, that's so much better. I feel so much better about that if that was the case. I really don't even care which one's true at this point. So what are they probably going to do to Aether Revolt now that it looks pretty popular and people want it? Hmm... I'm going to say five times the normal print run, even compared to Kaladesh, maybe 10 times. I mean, they can generate excitement and they can generate like, you know, some, some demand, but they've proven that they will overprint whatever that demand number is. It doesn't matter what it is. They will print more than that. Why? They don't want a shortage. If they have a shortage, they're losing money. If they have customers saying, I want to buy this and they don't have any, that is money gone. If they're sold out of fat packs of Aether Revolt, I'm going to go buy a box of Pop-Tarts instead. So right now, I have a $2,200 order, something like that, uh, MSRP of $3,800. That's my standing order right now until they rip me off and tell me they have to allocate me less product. You know, so that they can rip me off and send it to, you know, Troll and Toad and Card Kingdom, because God knows they need them, unlike my little teeny tiny couple thousand dollar order. No, I don't need that. Send it to them. Send it to Walmart. They need it better. You know, got to support them. Seriously, if you do not think that they steal products from the smaller shops and send them to the bigger ones instead of the other way around, ask anyone. Ask any distributor. Ask any small shop. From what I heard, Southern Hobby is even worse than my distributor at this. They will just outright cancel small shops orders. Oh, BFZ fat packs look like they're going to be popular. Cut this one, 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 and this one, and send them all to that one guy because we like him better because we're crooked and they probably bribed us. That's how the distribution chain of magic product works, just in case you didn't know. Oh, and some distributors just sit on the product. They just pretend it's sold out, cut your order, and then just keep it themselves as an investment. So anyway, back to Aether Revolt. It's not going to go up in price. Yes, people want it, and it's going to sell like crazy, but they're going to print to that level of demand, so the cards are going to be worth nothing. Assuming that Wizards doesn't short print the set and that people can get their hands on boxes, here's what's going to happen. Oh, look, you open one box and it's worth guaranteed $160 on average at high volume. Guess what I'm going to do? Call up my vendor. And this is literally what I can do. I can call up my vendor the day of the release and say, I need another 17 cases. It shows up the next morning as long as I get the, the order in before three o'clock central time. I can magically summon more boxes to open within 24 hours, get them opened within another 12 hours, and then get them posted online in singles. That's how quick the turnaround is. So like I said, assuming Wizards doesn't short all of the six major distributors, the product's going to be there. So what happens when the product's there? 
Well, 160 starts going down to 150, 140, 130, 120, and at a certain point, it hits 110, which is where it always sits. Always. Now, if the set bombs, it'll hit like $50. I mean, come on. Like, like look up the return of uh, what, BFZ right now. It's a joke. I think it's like $34 a box or something. I think it's competing with Homelands. But if the set is successful, it'll stay at just like a 1% to 5% margin from the most efficient single sellers on the planet. We're, we're talking 77 a box, open it, and then after, you know, shipping and fees, and they don't use tracking, they use envelopes, and they buy in bulk, and they use the cheap ghetto scotch tape instead of the nice tape. We're talking razor-thin margins here. Those people make just a couple percent. That is what the value is sold down to. If it drops below that amount, people will stop ordering it instantly. They will not get any kind of, you know, second or third shipments in. Now, this works for me. For other people, there's only a reasonable amount of stuff you can put on a semi-truck and fit in a warehouse. So they usually have to wait to reorder their 1,000 cases until there are a thousand cases. So on a large scale, it doesn't quite work like that. Not everybody can say, I need another thousand cases by tomorrow and they'll do it. But for small shops like me, yeah, that's how quick it is. So even if the box EV looks really damn good on day one, by day three, it's not going to be. Just wait for that slow, slow, slow fall. Speaking of that, I would strongly recommend if for some dumb reason you plan on playing standard after A3 Volt comes out, which I can't imagine why anybody would do that on purpose. I don't care if the FNM prize is $1,000. I'm not going to play standard if it turns out the way it looks right now. If they ban 5, 10 cards from it, okay, I'll come back and play it. Otherwise, I have no interest in playing some overpriced crap where I can't even use my five existing decks at all. They don't stand a chance in hell now. Oh, except for Gravity Bomb, they updated that one, so it's even more powerful now. Great. When Emrakul's controlling my turn and tapping down my own creatures, I'll be sure to send a thank you note to Wizards. But if you, for some reason, want to build a deck, or even if you just want the cards for Commander or Modern... Just wait three weeks after the release, because these prices, if they even are high at launch, because a lot of people see through Wizards BS, they know damn well what's going to happen to the card prices, they will go down. No matter how high they start, they are going to go down the toilet, because this is going to be the best sold set ever. Like, ever. I mean, honestly, if you look at the numbers, I could have told you that before I even saw a spoiler. Well, except for the fact that it was a 184 card set, nobody really sees that coming. But that's another factor. Um... There's not 302 cards in this set or whatever the highest one I've ever seen. Actually, the highest one I've ever seen, I think, is like 360. If you open 100 boxes, how many of each Mythic are you going to have if there's 300 cards versus 184 or 2 or whatever the hell the new set is? I mean, it's almost double. You have almost doubled the supply of every individual card. You don't have to be an economics expert to know what that'll do to the single sales. So the gameplay, the experience at pre-release is going to be garbage. The uh, constructed scene is going to be a joke. They just wiped out all of BFC and OGW. The cards are worthless and useless. They wiped out all of Shadows and Eldritch Moon. Those are worthless and useless now. That was nice of them. And uh, if you like a, a long, drawn-out, like, actual, skillful game of magic, I guess I'll call it, no, not until uh, Aether Revolt cycles out or until they get a clue and start banning, like, multiple cards. They'd have to ban the whole damn set, just about. Everything that casts for free, everything that causes an infinite loop, it would be at least a dozen cards at this point. Let's be honest, they're not going to do it. So standard is ruined for the next, what, year and a half, two years, whatever, however the hell long it takes to cycle this garbage out of the system. There's going to be no variety in deck building, and if you build a really, really cool deck, but it's not, you know, one of the most powerful decks, you don't stand a chance in hell. You might as well not even show up. You're going to go 0-5 every single FNM. So that's why I'm a little bit pissed off about the Aether Revolt spoilers. Just a little bit. They just ruined magic. They ruined it. They ruined it completely. In fact, if what I think will happen, which is 50% of players gone, just gone, absolutely gone from FNM, stop playing, stop buying, they don't touch it, they're done. What do you think that'll do to my channel? So for the people saying, oh, just, just ignore it, you don't have to play, you can play an alternate format or just go play a different game. Wizards is losing me money at this point, and I don't mean a small amount of money, and I really need that money. So it seems I'm probably going to have to work 18 hours a day instead of 14 hours a day to start a second channel to just support the losses that are coming when everybody loses interest in Wizards' greed. And let's be honest, that's what's at the end of all this. That is the source. 
It's Wizards wants money. They want to sell packs. They don't care about the health of the game. They don't care about the future of the game. They don't care about anything. They just want money, 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 and every single set, whatever they can do to trick you and lie to you and just whatever they have to do to get your money, that's what they're going to do. Well, until it all collapses. Honestly, I can't wait. They deserve it, even if it completely destroys my channel. And I might have well have been making a Force of Will channel this whole time. Like, that level disaster. And don't say it can't happen. Look at the popularity of Force of Will. They released one set that pissed people off. Poof, gone. The game's dead. It's not like they stopped issuing cards, as far as I know. But, um, let's be honest, it's dead. Their player base is gone. Everybody gave up. Nobody carries the products. It's over for them. From one set. They might as well have titled that set Aether Revolt. So if you're wondering about the actual plans for the future, um, honestly, if my other channel becomes as popular or more popular than this one, <laughs> bye everyone. But other than that, I'm just going to keep doing, you know, the, like the original content from about eight, nine months ago. Screw the deck tech, screw the standard coverage. Oh, here's a great deck I came up with. No, I'm not even going to touch that. No, more like, let's see what types of chemicals can burn cards the fastest. Hey, I know. Let's go blow up some cards with a hand grenade. Let's dress up as Gangsta Jace and do a sick freestyle rap. You know, really dumb content. I think at that point, that would be very reflective of how seriously people would take magic at that point, if they're even still interested in playing. If for some reason you disagree with anything I've said in this video, please post why? Because nobody's posting why. They're saying, oh, I, I think you're wrong. I think you're overreacting. Okay, why? Why Why can people not summon a vehicle on turn three and swing with it that's a 10-11? Like, why, why is that fact not true? Why are there not 15 infinite loops in standard right now? And by the way, most of them involve energy. No, I will not post them. That's not a constructive use of my time. You'll see them quickly enough. Nobody's been able to refute anything I'm saying other than I think you're wrong. I, I feel like you're wrong. We'll have to wait and see. Like, just stupid crap like that. I've presented logical evidence. I've shown you the card combos. I've said exactly the evidence leading up to it, why they did it, why they made the decision, what happened to other games that did the same thing. It's basically like a doctorate paper at this point. And people are, are refuting it with, well, I think you're wrong. Okay, Sparky, give me some evidence then. There is no refuting facts and logic. There just isn't. So give it up. The game is going to go down the toilet. Anybody who doesn't like powerful standard is gone. And that is way more players than you think. If you have the little ridiculous notion in your head that everybody's a pro player and everybody's like a long time tenure player and they can handle this and they're going to enjoy like a, a turn three, four, like super quick duel. Uh, no, that is not most people. Most people even attending FNM are casual. They want to build their own deck ideas. They're not net deckers. And this, we're talking just above 50%. Okay. There goes those people. They're gone. Why should they even show up? It's just like cons. Nobody showed up to FNM and cons, or I should say after dragons came out. That's when all of cons had been released. Honestly, even FRF, it was getting there. That is precisely when Wizards started screwing up because that's precisely when people stopped showing up to FNM and stopped buying their products. They were losing customers, they panicked, and now they made this sequence of idiotic mistakes and decisions, and you can't refute that. Everything they've printed lately, they've printed wrong. They've lied about stuff. I mean, they've covered stuff up. This is fact. This is not opinion. The game, the product, the market, everything in the community is going to suffer because of the stupid design choices in Aether Revolt. That is a fact. Just wait and see. If you're not as pissed off as I am, that just means you don't quite get it yet. It hasn't quite set in yet, but give it a couple weeks. I guarantee it will. See you guys next video. See you guys next video.